you know, you come into marriage just being you, right? You just do it the way you do. I like to see something, walk into a room and notice something's out of place and move it or come into a space that needs to be changed around and I just change it. Unfortunately, I didn't know I did this, but I brought that into our relationship. When he would, um, you know, go to the store or something, you know, here he is kindly offering to go to the store and I would give him a list and he would inevitably come home and that list would look nothing like what he brought home. And I would, <laughs> I would be instantly frustrated, you know, that it didn't look the way, you know, that it wasn't the same thing I would have gotten. My problem was I'm a, I'm kind of a classical workaholic. So, you know, and I think most entrepreneurs are, you know, not only did my family depend on me, but my family at work, you know, my company, my employees, my, you know, customers, they all depended on me too. So I felt a lot of times like I had to pick, like I was being put in a position where I had to choose, you know, if you don't choose me, you're choosing them. We were, we were building a house several years ago and I was out here at like 7.30 at night one night and I'm laying side, you know, and the sun's going down and she's in an apartment with the kids and she calls me and she says, Hey, where are you? What are you doing? And I said, well, I'm out here trying to put this side down so we can get, you know, some, some inspection. And she got mad at me for not coming home. But I, you know, I felt really kind of put in the middle because I'm trying to work for us. So I felt like I had to be out there and I had to be producing. And, uh, yeah. she wanted me home and I couldn't understand why. I'm saying, hey, where are you? Because I, I want to be with him. And now I'm disappointed because he didn't come home when he said he would. But instead, what I should have done was say, hey, honey, how's it going out there? Can I help? What can I do? You know, I felt like at some point in, in prayer, you know, God had said, just over time, he kind of said, Leah, did you marry a good guy? And I'm like, yeah, of course I married a good guy. Brian's good. He's a good guy. Well, does he love you? Yeah, yeah, I, th I think he, yeah, I know for sure he loves me. He loves me. Okay, well, then why would you assume that he didn't want to be with you? Why would you assume, you know, and so it started to to turn a little bit for me. And I started to to think, too, that, you know, I'm not trying to change who he is. He is an entrepreneur. He is a a hardworking person, he's doing all that for us, for our life together. I mean, she's always trusted me. I've always trusted her. Not like trust, like we're gonna cheat on each other or anything, but I think just believing, really. It's not trust right. so much as it's just believing in the other person, that their intentions are good. That's right. If I had trusted him from the beginning, I wouldn't have constantly been disappointed. Um, and really, I was allow I was just allowing that to happen. I still mess up and still go, oh, he just, he didn't come home. And then I go, wait a minute, you know, I have to like backpedal a little bit. Um, and I guess your brain, you know, wants to see a pattern and go, oh, okay, well, this is a pattern of behavior I see in him. What does that mean? And you try to turn it into something. But it, for me, it was turning into something negative that was making him out to be a bad guy. I had to change that and it, it's still going on, like I'm still doing it. It's just a lot easier, you know, after you do it for a while and, um, you know, have God kind of tap on your shoulder saying, hey, you know what, remember Brian's good, you know, he's a good guy, he loves you.